along to an older way of shopping. Uh, markets would stay open only half of the day and this is because people would go out almost every day to shop for fresh produce in a time when there was little, if any, refrigeration at all. So the food had to be bought, cooked and eaten before it would go off. Less and less people shop in markets nowadays, so although the recent focus on a more sustainable use of foods is bringing people back to markets, the traditional way of using markets is however exactly how the ancient Romans shop. Ancient Rome, at the peak of its development, was a megalopolis of more than one million inhabitants and the retail trade thrived. Mm. The shops would have been everywhere in the public places of the city and the shop owners would have displayed their goods on the outside of the properties, sometimes taking over more space than what they should have and the goods themselves would have been protected by awnings or by the roofs of the buildings themselves. Yeah, the street vendors uh, would uh, set up their stalls uh, which provided uh, services, mm -hmm. uh, for example shoe repairers, uh, or they uh, could be selling a variety of goods of all kinds, uh, from kitchen utensils to outside temples. For example, they sold flower garlands uh, as votive offerings. And then of course uh, food. Food was being sold both raw and cooked on the spot, uh, ready to be eaten. The ancient Romans loved their shopping. Like we do today. Yes, Even exactly. Then, yeah. But after a while, some were not so happy about uh, all this tr the streets of the city being taken over by all this stuff. Exactly. In fact, poet Marshall... Oh yeah, Ma Marshall the Grump. <laughs> yes. In the first century AD, he actually complained about Rome just being one big taberna, which in Latin means shop. And he uh, applauded Emperor Domitian when he limited all this commercial misuse of public space. The audacious shopkeepers had appropriated themselves the entire city, and a man's old threshold was not his own. Ah, oh, the city is now Rome. Until recently, it was just one huge shop. So the shops would advertise the goods they were selling by having signs on the front which would have been hand painted or maybe in mosaic. But the biggest publicity was actually done by the shop owners who would shout out to attract the clients and promote their merchandise. So you imagine that these hawkers were actually the background noise. They were the, the, <laughs> the, soundtrack. the, the soundtrack of uh, uh, the everyday life activities here in the city center. Yes, yeah, for example, exactly here in the Roman Forum, uh, which was indeed the center of the political and of the religious life, uh, at least until late Republican times. Uh, That's the BC period. Yes, it could happen that uh, down there by the Rostra, a political announcement uh, would be made, uh, or in the central square, an event mm. could be taking place, or Finally, by yeah. the many temples, uh, they could be uh, celebrating a religious event, a religious ceremony. All this, <laughs> while in the meantime, the street vendors loudly advertise their goods. Uh, you certainly cannot say that ancient Rome was in any way a quiet spot, <laughs> any more than it is today, in no, fact. Absolutely. Eventually, the commercial activities were driven away from the forum by the authorities who thought it damaged the dignitas of the area. Here, are still some of the remains of those shops. The last traders to leave the Forum were the Argentari. The moneylenders and coin exchangers. Yes, them, together with the jewellers, um, and amongst whom the uh, pearl traders were the most renowned. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, the uh, Argentari happened to be all over the city of Rome because, you see, the Romans never had one single currency and therefore exchanging coins uh, was uh, something needed uh, to back up most transactions. Uh, there was indeed a concentration of uh, uh, this trade in this street, the Clivus Argentarius, right at the foot of the Capitoline Hill. And uh, here you can see the remains of some of their shops. Markets used to be very specific in what they sold, you know, very specific items. But there would be shops scattered all around the city and there was no designated street or area where those shops would be selling one item. Except in the case of distinctive things like for example here where we have the moneylenders. Probably in an attempt to stop these ubiquitous retail activities, the macella were created. These would compare to today's uh, luxury good shopping malls and it would be quite common to find walking through them the rich people of Rome, maybe participating in some auction for the fish or for the game, but also there to buy their delicacies such as confectionaries or cakes or special herbs or maybe cooked foods. The first one of these macella was built right here, just outside the Roman Forum in the second century BC, in the place where the fish market had been, the Forum Piscarium, which had been destroyed by a fire. Not that the Romans ate a lot of fish. Fresh fish was expensive, and so you would really only find it in the homes of the very rich. On top of that, uh, in antiquity, without refrigeration, uh, it was rare to find fresh fish away from the coast. More commonly, uh, Romans ate uh, uh, seafood, such as varieties of clams uh, or mussels and even oysters. Or, even more commonly, they would eat salt fish or a sauce made from fermented fish called That's garum right. or liquamen, which to us sounds terrible, but they used to love it. I know, Romans loved it. Well, I read that it tasted a little bit like that British sauce, the Worcester... Worcester! Worcester! Worcester. Worcester. Come I can on, never you know get that it. right, the Worcester sauce. <laughs> The ruins we see here today do not belong to either the fish market or to the macellum, which was itself destroyed to make room for the Forum of Peace, built at the end of the first century after Christ. Plenty more macella were scattered around the city. The most remarkable, the Macellum Livie, was on the intensely populated Esquiline Hill. Yes, possibly in the location of the Church of St. Mary Major, underneath which a possible warehouse space was rediscovered. Another famous structure of this kind uh, was the Macellum Manium, built by Nero in 59 AD on the Celian Hill near the Colosseum. From coins we know that it was a round building, uh, developed on two levels, uh, covered by a dome and surrounded by a colonnade. Many archaeologists believe that this early Christian church, Santo Stefano Rotondo, is built exactly where Nero's luxury mall was located. We're now come just across the street from the Roman Forum. Eh? And here we can see what is called Trajan's Markets. For a long time it was believed that it was a complex of shops, a bit like a shopping mall of today. But now the archaeologists all agree in saying that it was actually something to do with the administration of the empire. So offices? Yes, also offices. Nonetheless, there are shops in the area, so this was actually not one huge building, but a system of shops, streets and administration offices all in one big complex. But to the back of all this, there are some shops. Shall we go see? Yes. There are some places in the city of Rome where still today you can feel that you're back in time. Yes, it's a bit like here. It's almost as if we could be shopping 2,000 years ago. I know, except that you don't see the goods. Uh, Roman shops would bring their goods on the outside. They would display them outside and only store them inside at night. Look, you can still actually see the markings of the doorways. They used to open them and close them uh, as they were opening or closing the shop. So they would pull them across and like a folding door, they would gather all the wood in the, of the doorway in the side and then they could pull it closed again at night. As you can see, there's a ledge 
halfway up the wall, and that was to support a wooden floor, which would have divided into two levels the huge room. And there would have been a wooden staircase that would have allowed for people to reach that level. That was because they lived up there. The shop owner uh, would have had his family quarters on the second level. Sometimes, though, they didn't even have a second level. They lived at the back yeah. of the, the shop itself, so at ground level. Shops and markets in ancient Rome uh, followed the similar opening times uh, as our modern markets, uh, which means they opened early in the morning uh, and then they closed in the middle of the day. It's quite it's amazing, aren't they, street? It's, it's exactly as it used to be. I know, with the shops, and the street, the pavement, yeah, the sidewalk. Yeah, exactly. The Subura, the suburbs uh, of ancient Rome, just outside the Fora area. Now the trendy Monte district. That's right. At that time, it was the working class area. And of course, this is uh, where the cheapest markets were located, where the locals shopped, uh, as well as the slaves. Uh, these markets mostly sold vegetables uh, and uh, chicken. But it is here, at the other side of the Forum, uh, towards the river, towards the west, uh, that the busiest, uh, and in fact oldest, uh, commercial activity did take place. This street is the Vicus Tuscus, the Etruscan neighbourhood, where the luxury shops used to be. And they used to sell expensive linens and extremely famous perfumes. The perfume shops became so famous that the street was actually renamed after them. Yes, the Vicus Unguentarius, or Street of Ointments, uh, because you see, um, perfumes in ancient Rome were perfumed oils. In fact, the ancient Romans loved to massage them on their bodies after they'd been to the baths. The Romans gradually really got into enjoying this Mediterranean uh, luxury lifestyle, Absolutely. especially, you know, with the bathing and with the perfumes. Not far from here was also the infamous uh, slave market, because uh, of course slavery was crucial in the economy of uh, ancient times. And the uh, slave market uh, also included uh, the truly awful market of monsters, uh, so-called market of monsters, which is basically where people with disabilities were sold. Uh, you know, when you start looking at antiquity in detail, you do really start noticing a lot of dark corners absolutely. that should be investigated oh, more. Absolutely, you're so, right. you're so right. The presence of these really horrible places can be better understood now that we are coming up to what used to be the open market area of the archaic the old times. Yes, of the archaic times. So far we have presented the general retail activities of the ancient Romans, but it's now time to explore how crucial trade was to the origin rising the thriving of Rome. of Rome. Of course, but that's another video. Yes, Trade and Markets, Part, part two. 2.